Israel will fight until we destroy Hamas's military capabilities and its rule in Gaza and bring all our hostages home. Since Hamas's attack on October the 7th, Israel has been laying waste to the Gaza Strip. Tens of thousands killed, and the Israeli government now accused of committing genocide. But what can the history of the conflict tell us about how we got here? My guest tonight is the famously provocative Israeli historian, Benny Morris. His work once documented many of the crimes committed by Israel in 1948, but his critics say he now justifies those crimes. I'm Mehdi Hassan, and I'm here in London's legendary free speech society, Conway Hall, to go head to head with Benny Morris. I'll challenge him on his support for the war on Gaza and ask him why he thinks accusations of genocide are absurd. Tonight, I'll be joined by our panel of experts, Daniel Levy, a former Israeli peace negotiator and president of the US Middle East Project, Diana Butu, the Palestinian lawyer and former advisor to the PLO, and Emmanuel Navon, an Israeli lecturer of diplomatic studies at Tel Aviv University. Benny Morris, thank you for joining me on Head to Head. You are a supporter, a defender of Israel's current war in Gaza, which began in its current form after the atrocities on October the 7th, and which has since killed uh, more than 38,000 Palestinians, including 15,000 children, uh, displaced more than a million people, made Gaza uninhabitable per the UN, and is being investigated as a possible genocide at the International Court of Justice. A lot of people around the world think it's a genocide. I happen to think uh, it's a genocide, but you have called that accusation absurd. Why? Well, I once investigated a real genocide by Muslim Turks against the Christian communities of Turkey around the year 1900. Uh, some two million Christians were killed at the time by Muslim Turks. Um, and that's what a genocide actually looks like. What's happening in Gaza is a war. It's a war in which there are a lot of collateral um, deaths uh, among uh, Gazans. The war started, of course, by the Hamas from Gaza in a giant massacre um, on October 7th. And the only way to um, respond to that, and any country would have responded to that, more or less in the same fashion, I think, was to try and go after the Hamas. But the Hamas was embedded in the population, as you know, used the schools, the, the UNRWA schools, the um, hospitals, as bases, as places where they stocked their ammunition, their guns themselves, hid in tunnels underneath these schools, in apartment buildings. And this all involved collateral damage, which of course the Hamas knew it was going to ignite by killing uh, 1,200 Israelis on the 7th of October. I myself have problems with the war uh, as it's being waged, but um, genocide it definitely isn't. The aim here is not to kill as many Palestinians. That's not the definition of genocide. It's one you of the you wrote a book on genocide. That's yeah. not the definition of genocide. It's one of the definitions. It's not. Try and kill. It's not based on numbers, the definition It's of also genocide. based on intent and on yes, numbers. It's yes, it's based on the intent. Yes. There's to no destroy, to kill in whole or in part. There's no intent here. That's yeah, as we'll, far we'll come as I know, I'm not. I'm not. I just want to give, I'm, just. It's I'm not a, no, I'm not a government spokesman. You seem to be I'm not, presenting me as a government how spokesman. Did I, how I'm did not. I present you in a government uh, spokesman? I asked you for your view like on. It. I asked you for your view on the war. I didn't say anything. We'll come to the government. I'm just asking about your view right now. The definition There's, of genocide. You wrote a book on it. Is nothing to do with how many people you kill. So it's not a numbers game. It's also a numbers game. The ICC chief prosecutor has asked for arrest warrants, not just for Hamas leaders, but for the Israeli prime minister and the defense minister for war crimes and crimes against humanity. And he says he has mountains of evidence. We've all seen with our own eyes the Israelis in Gaza commit war crimes on camera, kill unarmed people who are carrying white flags, blow up apartment buildings, drop 2,000 pound bombs on crowded refugee camps. Can we at least agree, Benny, even if we're going to disagree on genocide, that Israel has committed numerous war crimes since the Hamas war crimes on October the 7th? I'm fairly sure there have been war crimes, but the war itself is not a war crime, as the Hamas attack on Israel on the 7th of October was. It was a war crime from beginning to end. The aim was to kill as many civilians as possible which they did in accordance with the Hamas charter, which is to kill basically every Jew you can get hold of in 
Palestine. But I didn't ask about the aim. I asked about the acts that are being committed. As I said, probably there have been, as in all wars, war crimes. You committed. accept there have been war crimes? Yes. So you would support an arrest warrant for Benjamin Netanyahu? I didn't say that. Why? Firstly, there hasn't been an arrest warrant. I know, there's been a request been from the ICC request. Okay. prosecutor. So far, they haven't issued it. I don't know if you can hold a prime minister responsible if a sergeant kills several unarmed people intentionally. You don't think the Israeli Air Force bombing apartment buildings, refugee camps, mosques, if, if, cemeteries, hospitals, if schools, the ho if the universities, libraries? Firstly, it hasn't bombed, as far as I know, hospitals. I they have attacked... <laughs> As literally as no, literally, attacked, no, no, literally no. no expert agrees with you on that. That's not, that's not true. What you're saying is not true. The only hospital which I remember being okay. bombed was by a rocket fired oh by the Islamic God. Jihad oh my by God. mistake. Oh that's my as far God. as I remember. So, Israel so, has raided hospitals. So let me, Israel, let, 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 me, let me talk. Let, Israel has raided hospitals but with infantry. Let me ask it's you this found question. found Hamas uh, people in their Hamas headquarters inside hospitals, when, under hospitals. Actually, we've never seen the headquarters that Benjamin Netanyahu put a beautiful Bond movie video out for. We've never actually seen that from underneath Al Shifa. It's been several months. We're still waiting for that. So on the 31st of October, according to Human Rights Watch, Israel, Israeli forces unlawfully attacked a six-story residential building, killing 106 civilians including 54 children without warning, four strikes, completely demolished. Human Rights Watch found no evidence of a military target in the vicinity, making the strike unlawful, indiscriminate under the, the laws Hamas, of war. The Israeli Hamas, authorities have provided no justification for the attack. The, the Hamas always hides uh, their own casualties. Even the Israelis didn't say that they were hiding in the apartment building. I, I don't, you said you don't want to be a spokesman I for the government. Know You're this. offering a better defense no, of the no, government no. than the government is. I, I don't know... I don't know the particulars of that particular attack. It could be that there was a war crime committed there. It could also be that there were hundreds of Hamas fighters in the building alongside. Alongside, it you, could be you. The, okay, so let's. Have, take, you ever, have you ever seen footage? Let's take, wait, have you ever seen footage let's take, coming out of the Gaza Strip which shows a Hamas take, fighter let, dead? Let, have you ever take, seen that? How much? All you see is civilians. Well, Benny, Benny, because they're hiding. Benny, they're Benny, hiding I'm, their I'm not casualties. a Palestinian journalist. They're hiding. I'm a their, foreign journalist, and guess what? We're not they, allowed in by the Israelis. They are hiding their so, casualties. So let me ask you this no, but, So then, I agree we should allow people in. Do you agree with me? I agree with you. Let me tell you something about the Israeli Air Force if we're okay. talking about this. Each mission of the Israeli Air Force, and it's probably the most accurate and um, efficient arm of the Israeli military, is checked beforehand by a lawyer, et cetera, to see if, I'm, if there are actual, um, uh, is there evidence, there are actual yes. evidence of I'm so glad Hamas you're pointing this out. There. Because it's not a rogue operation, it goes all the way up. See, we can indict Netanyahu for these attacks because it's gone up the chain of command. It's not a rogue sergeant. No, no. It's not a rogue sergeant. We agree. All right. You say it's not genocide. Can we at least agree that it's genocidal rhetoric and genocidal intent from various members of the Israeli government? Yes. Can we agree that the rhetoric from Netanyahu and Herzog and Smotrich, it's, this is genocidal rhetoric? Some of the ministers, I'm not sure about Herzog's quotes and I'm not sure about what Netanyahu said, but some Netanyahu of the Netanyahu said Amalek, Benny. You know what Amalek, Amalek means. I don't know if that's the same as genocide, but... Killing every man, woman and child I don't know. and the donkeys. Do, do, <laughs> listen, there's, some, there's something really, there's something absurd about this line of questioning. If Israel was intent on genocide, if, can would you, you let, let him, me talk? Hold on, can you let him speak? Would you let me talk? Can you, can you, let, can you let him speak? Yes. <laughs> guys, 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 we are going to have to stop the entire show and you will all have to go home if we do not have some order. But Benny, please finish your point. If there was a genocidal intent in the war making in Gaza, there would be not 30,000. Incidentally, the, the numbers are all issued by Hamas. We don't know how true, how true they are. But if there was genocidal intent by the Israeli government with the Israeli military machine to commit genocide in Gaza, there would not be 30,000 or 20,000 Gazan dead. There would be hundreds of thousands of Gazan dead. I'm sure. That's, I'm that's, sure. That, is called, I'm, that is called genocide. And that's not what's happening in Gaza. Benny, we've Gaza. already discussed that's not the definition of genocide. But okay, let me <laughs> no, ask you this. That's not your definition no, of genocide. No, it's the 1948 Genocide Convention. There's I lots can, of different... Forget it. Forget the 1948 of, Genocide Convention. Of, there are lots of definitions That's not of true. Benny. There's yes, only sir. one. There's only one. It's the 1948 Genocide that sounds, Convention. That sounds dogmatic. There's only one. Yeah. There's only one truth, the Hamas truth. Sound the same. Is the 1948 Genocide Convention a Hamas charter? Are they, 
Is everything Hamas, Benny? If there is a genocidal side in this b okay. battle, it is the Hamas. Okay, let just me ask look, you this. Just look at its charter, read the words there, read what it says about by the way, what, Benny, what I, they intend Benny, by to the way, do to the Jews. Benny, That's what is Benny, important I've, I've, I've interviewed people from Hamas and I've asked them about the charter. I'm interviewing you right now. I'm and sure I want they to ask tell you, you it's a nice document. I'm sure they do. Israeli minister called Avi Dikta, a member of the security cabinet, he said, we're now rolling out the Gaza Nakba. He was referring to the Nakba, the catastrophe of 1948, when an estimated 700,000 Palestinians were driven from their homes. You famously documented a lot of that back in the 80s. You undermined a lot of Israeli propaganda that said they just fle fled on their own. So whether it's the 1948 Nakba or the 2024 Gaza Nakba, to quote Avi Dikta, for Palestinians, Zionism is Nakba. It is ethnic cleansing. Surely you of all people can recognize that. I'm not sure I can recognize that, no. Yeah, you keep putting words in my mouth. Zionism's intent was to establish a, a Jewish state in the area called Palestine, the land of Israel. Um, initially, the Zionists wanted to establish a Jewish state on the whole land of uh, Israel or all of Palestine. 1937, 1938, Zionism changed and said, we can't have all of the land. There are lots of Palestinians here. Let's share it with the Palestinians. <laughs> In 1937, the British Peel Commission proposed the partition of Palestine between the two peoples living in it. The Palestinians said no and continued their war against Britain and the Zionists. The Zionists said yes to the partition proposal um, by Peel. The international community repeated the idea of the partition of Palestine between the Jews and the Arabs in 1947, November, the famous resolution 181. The Jews said yes to the UN partition resolution of 1947, accepting it. They would get some of Palestine, the Palestinian Arabs would get the other part, and the Palestinians said no and started shooting the next day, but, killing so, Jews. So this it, is one of the reasons I wanted to interview you, because... Yes. Because I know some of the history. You do know some of the history, ah, and you okay. said they all share. But the problem is, I don't know which Benny Morris I'm speaking to, because you're saying they all <laughs> wanted to share the land. And yet, I have a book here that says, on the most basic level, Jewish colonization meant expropriation and displacement. Zionist ideology and practice were necessarily and elementally expansionist. Zionism was a colonizing and expansionist ideology. That's Righteous uh, Victim by, by Benny it's Morris. It's and I... Uh... <laughs> you can respond. I'm glad that the audience is cheering things I've written. Because you were, I, I really because you were are, right in 2001. I think they are. So I'm wondering agree, about what happened to 2024. And I, and I agree with every word in there. But as I said, Zionism changed its objective and goal in the 1930s and agreed reluctantly, um, resigned to the idea of partitioning the land. And from that point on, the Zionists, a number of times in 37, 47, the year 2008, proposed partitioning Palestine with the Palestinians, and the Palestinians consistently okay. have rejected okay. partition under the Hamas Palestinians okay. and under the PLO Fatah as well. Okay. They so always let me, rejected let me, partition. Let me ask you this. That's the truth, let me, the basic truth okay. of the conflict. Okay. Zionists is the, willing, so hold willing, on, Benny, let me ask you a question. Zionists willing to compromise, and the okay. Palestinians always say so, no. Benny, yes, go ahead. I want to read a quote out to you. Yes. You keep saying lots of positive stuff today, sharing, dividing. I want to read a quote to you. There are circumstances in history yes. that justify ethnic cleansing. Yes. That is not a quote from Slobodan Milosevic. Yes. That is not a quote from a Rwandan it's mine, genocide. It's mine, it's mine. Your quote. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of your critics and say you no, longer, you no longer just document ethnic cleansing, you apologize what's for it as well. What's the context of what I quote? What you're the, context is you, the context is you're asked, do you condemn what they did in 1948, Zionist militias? You say no. You're asked, they perpetrated ethnic cleansing. You say there are circumstances in history that justify ethnic cleansing. What was the circumstance I'm talking about? You say, I know that this term What's is... What's the circumstance? I'm, I'm reading your quote. What? I know that this term is completely negative. What's but when the, the choice is between ethnic cleansing and genocide, yes. the annihilation of your people, I prefer yes. ethnic cleansing. So the Jews understood in 48, the Jews were under threat of annihilation by the Arabs. And that, in my view, um, legitimized, justified cleansing Arabs from Palestine. The Jews, the Jews were threatened with death by a second genocide after the Nazi Benny, genocide. The Hutus said exactly the same thing about the they Tutsis in 1994. They were talking about the Zionists? No, they said, we can ethnically cleanse and kill these people because they're threatening us. No, right? no, I didn't Everybody say who's ever done bad say, things no, says no, we're no, doing no, it defensively, no, no, no. right? I didn't say threatening. I said the yeah. Arabs of Palestine attacked the Jewish community in Palestine yes. from 1947 but on. But that doesn't justify they were joined, ethnic cleansing, They were right? joined... 
they you were can't jo justify a war crime, a crime against humanity. Ethnic cleansing is not regarded as a war crime by any. Uh, so you're fine with it. It's not a matter of fine. It's not a happy I'm to event. Understand. We're not. I prefer ethnic cleansing of the other to being ma massacred. Uh, my my own people. Yes, sure. Even if that involves innocent people being driven from their homes and not allowed yes, to come back. Yes. If you if you are on the. How does that fit with Zionists wanted to share the land? Because of course the Zionists wanted. No, you're you're mixing. You're mixing up the, the, the times, the chronology. The Zionists were willing to share the land. The Arabs said no. The Arabs attacked them. And from that point on, the Jews, to defend themselves properly, they would have to drive out Arabs from certain areas uh, from which the Arabs were attacking the Jewish uh, So it was, it was a pragmatic thing in the heat of war? It wasn't ideological. It was pragmatic. Even though you yourself say that transfer was inevitable and inbuilt into Zionism. Your words. Uh, it, depends, it depends what you mean by transfer. A transfer. Depends what you mean by transfer. You're the one no, using no, the no. euphemism. It depends. No, no, no. It depends what part of the population we're talking about. Total transfer was never a, a, any part of Zionist Partial policy. transfer. A partial transfer from areas in which the Jews wanted to establish their state in part of Palestine and from which the Arabs were busy, busy attacking the Jews. OK, I want to bring in the panel yes. before I do. Uh, a lot of talk about whether Zionism is a form of colonialism. If I said to you Zionism is something colonial, what would you say to that? I would say there's some partial truth in it, but in, on large it's wrong. It's not a correct interpretation. Those of are Theodore Zionism. Herzl's words. He wrote a letter to Cecil Rhodes, the founder of Rhodesia in Zimbabwe. He said it's something colonial. Okay. So maybe you should take it up with okay. the founder I, of Zionism. I can't take it up with Herzl. Okay. Herzl may have said that in order to. Not may, he did in, say that. Ingratiate. But. No, no. In, 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 in an effort to ingratiate himself with the great colonizer, uh, Rhodes, it's possible. Uh, th that's not the point. The point is. This is why I don't understand. In Benny, other countries. Zionism, you don't, you don't Zionism allow, no, was. A... You don't allow me to finish sentences. I do, you know, please. No, please, you do. You continuously, please finish the continuously interrupt. Please. You're trying to do what um, Trump did to Biden. Wow, I've never been to... <laughs> compared to Trump before. That's a first. In order to... But please, but you've actually eaten up more time saying that, so in please order finish to your mess sentence. up his sentences. Zionism intended to liberate the Jews from the. Um, alienation and oppression uh, in, under which they lived in uh, Eastern Europe, also later Central Europe, by establishing a state of the Jews with a majority of Jews, with Jews ruling over themselves. They ended up, they ended up in, in part realizing that dream, dream at the expense of Palestinians. This is correct. Okay. This is what happened, Good. as it turned out. We'll end on a point of agreement and bring in our panel. Uh, we have Diana Butu, who's a Palestinian lawyer in Israel, former advisor to the PLO. Uh, Emmanuel Navon is an international relations lecturer at Tel Aviv University. Daniel Levy is a former Israeli peace negotiator, president of the US Middle East Peace Project. Diana, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about genocide, because we started the show talking about genocide. Be Benny very adamantly says it's absurd. There's many definitions. You're a lawyer. What do you make of that? Look, Benny is exactly what I expect him to be, which is a genocide denier and a genocide apologist. Every human rights organization has been defining this as a, as a genocide. We have the ICJ that has come out and said that there's plausible case for genocide, and yet we're to believe the Israelis, the only people who say that it isn't a genocide. Israel's allowed to be a colonizer. Israel's allowed uh, to do what it pleases, and that Palestinians just have to sit by idly and take it. And this is the fundamental problem with Zionism. But we, Palestinians, are the ones who feel Zionism on our bodies. We've paid for it with our lives. We've paid for it with our land. This attempt to redefine Zionism will go nowhere because you okay. know and the okay, world knows. Me, can I, it's a hold colonial, on, I'm going to bring in all the panel. Then it's a you. colonial... Oh, hold on. All right. Uh, Emmanuel, you teach international relations in Israel. Is there a recognition there? that a lot of the world, world governments, allies of Israel, as well as the usual human rights groups, are very critical, at a minimum, of the way that Israel is prosecuted, what's going on in Gaza. Well, first of all, Diana said, we're feeling Zionism. You're right, you're feeling it, because the only place in the Middle East where Arabs are free is Israel. <laughs> and so the freedom that you have, Diana, is because the only country in the Middle East where there is freedom is the state of Israel from which you benefit and you should be thankful for it. I, I'm not grateful at all. Because the only, the, only country, country. the only country in the Middle East 
where Arabs can elect their officials, be elected, be judges at the Supreme Court, be president of a university. The only free country in the Middle East is Israel. Dan, do you want to respond to that? I find it staggering that the gentleman to my right is telling the Palestinian citizen of Israel how she is experiencing the reality under which she lives. It's, it's a staggering moment for me. Now, you know, there were different strands to Zionism, okay? There was a cultural Zionism, there was a binational Zionism. This could have gone in different directions. From the perspective of 2024, 75 plus years in, the idea that this is just something benign doesn't match with the reality that has been lived. Now, I would say it's clear what this has meant for Palestinians, but I would argue it's not doing what was written on the tin for Jews either. I don't think either Israeli Jewish or global Jewish safety is best served by the actions we see day in, day out in Gaza. Penny, would you like to respond to what you've heard from the panel? Please. I, I think there's a misunderstanding here. There is a separation between Israel and the West Bank, Israel and the occupied territory largely populated by the Palestinians uh, and the state of Israel. In Israel itself, there is a rule of law. There is generally equality between the Jews and the Arabs, and you're misrepresenting it when you say that they are persecuted, and he's damn right in what he says, that all the Arab states are dictatorships which do not allow their citizens any freedom. And Israeli Arabs enjoy most of the rights. They may be discriminated against in certain things, but they may, may enjoy certain rights which Jews do not have. For instance, not serving three years, wasting three years in the army, for example. Israeli Arabs don't yeah, do we that. Don't, we don't want yeah, to do no, 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 yes. it's, it's fine. Yes, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure most Palestinians are yeah. desperate to serve in yeah. the Israeli military you're, right now. I'm sure, yes. I'm, no, I'm sure Thank you're right. You for leaving but us some do. I'm yeah. should some be do. In pre-1967 Zionism and Israel, it was not a colonial enterprise. In the West Bank, there is a colonizing and colonial framework, which is even apartheid-like uh, in its actual workings. But in pre-1967 Israel, that was not the case. And for the first hundred years or so of Zionism, it wasn't a colonial venture. It wasn't I, a venture I, of an extension Benny. of an imperial. Let me just define colonialism since you're so okay. busy defining genocide. Imperialism and colonialism were matched together in which an imperial an empire sent its children to dominate and take over a third world country and exploit that, its riches not and its that. people. This is not what Israel did until 1967. Emmanuel, do you agree with Benny that there is a colonial aspect and apartheid-like aspect to the occupied West Bank? No. Uh, Zionism is a national liberation movement that freed its land from Arab Muslim colonialism. How do you think Islam expanded itself from the Arab Peninsula to Indonesia, from Indonesia to Morocco? Not from the Holy Spirit. This was conquest and colonialism. Okay, we are out of time, but I'm going to give Diana the last word before we go take a break. Okay, so now we have a Nakba denier and a Nakba a apologist, proud denier. as well as a genocide denier, genocide apologist. The point of the matter is, is that Palestinians have always paid the price for Israel's colonial adventures. My family hails for hundreds of years from Palestine. And what happened in 1948 was my family was ethnically cleansed from Palestine. Where? From, from Al Limjadil never able to return back to their to their home. My father died unable to return okay. back to his village because of the colonialism that is called Zionism. There is no place we are, for Zionism. We in are this way world today. over on time. Daniel, 30 seconds you want to come in. What's remarkable to me is we've gone from denying the Nakba, and Benny Morris actually helped get past that, to threatening a second Nakba, and that's the narrative in Israel today, without going through what's most necessary which is acknowledging and healing and redressing and Palestinians actually getting their rights. Because without that, not only will Palestinians never see peace and security and the achievement of freedom, but Jewish Israelis will always live in the knowledge that that wrong will create a blowback and there's no security. That is it for part one of Head to Head with our special guest, Benny Morris. In part two, uh, we'll be talking about what is happening inside of Israeli society. We'll be talking a bit more about Benny Morris's views. And we'll hear from our, I was going to say patient audience at Conway Hall, but they're not so patient tonight. That's in part two of Head to Head.
Welcome back to Head to Head on Al Jazeera English. I'm with my guest, Benny Morris, one of Israel's most famous historians. We have a panel of experts and we have a live audience here in London's Conway Hall, who we will be hearing from shortly. Benny Morris, in part one of the show, we argued you and I about uh, genocide, about ethnic cleansing, about the Nakba. Can we start part two, Benny? by agreeing, both of us, on something that Israel has seen in recent years, a pretty serious, severe, brazen shift to the right, some would say far right, uh, with the likes of Bezal al-Smotrich and Itmar Ben-Gavir in the cabinet, uh, a lot of fanatical settlers inciting violence in the occupied West Bank. According to some polls, 60% of Israeli Jews say it's better for there to be segregation between the two societies. 48%, according to one poll a few years ago, supported the expulsion of Palestinian citizens of Israel. What is going on in Israel? Israel has turned definitely to the right. It's partly to do with demography. More religious people are born, uh, more than secular people. Uh, I would say also, unfortunately, more Sephardi people are born than Ashkenazi secular people. I would say that in addition to the demographic shift, which has taken place in the last 20, 30, 40 years, um, continuous Arab terrorism and Arab reluctance to reach a compromise has also driven Israelis to the right. Uh, you've also been critical of the far right in Israel, as we just heard you say. I'm very critical. You've called Netanyahu cowardly and incompetent. But you yourself have been criticized by some on the left, both in Israel and abroad, for your own views. And I just want to get through some of them with you, because you've said what many would say are, are racist things about Palestinians, Arabs, Muslims. Uh, you've called them barbarians. You've said they have no moral inhibitions. Uh, you've said they ought to be caged. You've said Palestinian citizens of Israel are a time bomb, a fifth column, oh, yeah, yeah, the I, emissary I, I got, of the I enemy. Got, I got the gist. I know, but the audience need to hear it. Ah, okay. um, you say you're a liberal and you believe in the peace process. A lot of Palestinians would say, how do we make peace with people who say they're liberal Zionists and they think of us in this way? It's quite a question of quoting out of context, which you are um, indulging in. Those who blew up buses and in restaurants in Israel during the Second Intifada, I'm talking about both Hamas and Fatah terrorists, um, um, I called barbarians and they behaved. Not just them. And I did, no, no, I called them barbarians and they behaved like barbarians. You didn't call all and Arabs they, barbarians? And, no, I didn't. You did and, actually and in no, 2004 no, in Haaretz. No, you said no. the Arab world as it is today is barbarian. That's true. The Arab world, I didn't say all Arabs are barbarians, I said the Arab world is barbarian in its behavior. What does that mean? The Arab does it mean? world well, is barbarian. Have a look at Syria where the regime killed about half a million people in its civil war trying to suppress an uprising. Look at Sudan, where the Arabs are busy killing uh, blacks in Darfur. Look at Libya, where they are killing each other. They throw bombs at funeral cortages. Look at Iraq. They behave like barbarians. If somebody said to you, and I would say this is anti-Semitic, if somebody said to you the Jews are barbarians, the Jewish world is barbarian, I think you would agree that's anti-Semitic. Uh, and if somebody said, well, I'm not being anti-Semitic, because I'm just talking about the IDF. I don't think it would be anti-Semitic. It would be false. That's the point. You don't think it would be anti-Semitic for me to say I, the Jewish world is barbarian? Be, it would be false, not, not okay. necessarily anti-Semitic. And when you say the Israeli Arabs are a time bomb, they're a potential fifth column. This That's is, all of them. You didn't say some terrorists. I said Israel's, Israel's Arab um, minority, uh, which identifies in large measure with the Palestinian cause, is in the long historical perspective a potential time bomb. Yes, I would agree with that. You said they're a potential fifth column. Or a potential fifth column, yes. An it's emissary fight. of the enemy that is among us. This is vicious stuff. No, I, I don't remember the using the word enemy. Uh, or Whether you, you remember it or not is irrelevant. What? You said it. The slide is, their slide into complete Palestinization has made them an emissary of the enemy that is among us. This during is during stuff, the Benny. Second Intifada, when there were riots by Israeli Arabs, blocking of roads, etc., um, they behaved like an emissary of the enemy. This is correct. It depends on context. You keep quoting things without explaining the context. I'm not sure there is any context for dismissing an entire people as a fifth column. Nobody is. <laughs> OK, go ahead. All right, let's talk about some other views of yours, which are somewhat controversial, many would say. You're not just somebody who said some... You don't pretty... actually want any facts from me or any, any explanations of anything. You just, you just want... explained you yourself just... very well. You, you said the Iraqis want... No, you just, want to, you just want to accuse. That's, I'm not accusing, actually. Yes, it's are. not an accusation, no, it's a fact. Really a, this isn't really an interview. This is basically blame-throwing and um, a, an interrogation. You don't uh, like defending your views? I don't like defending my views. 
I'm able to defend my views, but okay, you come up with these quotations which are out of context. Oh, that's you don't explain the historical context. Okay, everything. The audience doesn't understand what you're talking about. I just read they, the entire and then, quote to and then they you. Used, I read the entire and then quote they used to you, the Benny. word racist, which you Benny. used at the beginning when you introduced this you said, Yeah, you said, when, okay, this, here's something else you said. You said, we're you're, talking you're, about murder in far larger numbers. It's not a matter of money referring to Palestinians in Israel. It's the society's nature. Yes, I would say that's a racist comment to say an entire society in, during has a murderous nature. During the Second Intifada... This was said in 2019, Benny, not in the Second Intifada. It's not my fault if you can't remember when you said things. In 2019, you said, this is not about... This is, we're talking about murder. It's the society's nature. You could, the you murder could, of who? The murder rates in Israel. You said Arabs ah, have higher murder ah, rates. Explain to the audience what we're talking I'm about. I'm sorry to break it to you. That's the, not uh, an, that no, doesn't wait, get wait, you out of it. You let, said no, it's let, the society's let me explain, nature. Let Please. me explain what was going on. Um, the murder rates by Israeli Arabs of their fellow people, basically, not of Jews, but of fellow Arabs, is much, much higher. It's about 100 or 200 percent higher than the murder rate among Jews. The same applies, incidentally, to the killing of women. Uh, the same applies to honor, honor mur murders, which are called uh, honor killings, when a woman shows too much leg or looks at a man the wrong way. This is unfortunately inherent in Arab societies in general in the Middle East and among Israeli Arabs as well. That's the context. Racist. My, my problem you know is there's no context true. for making racist. sweeping statements. You know that's true. Let me and ask you this. Racist. Let me ask is you this. Is that true or not? Let me, you are we'll, a racist. We will is bring it in, true? We will bring in not Diana. racist. Is it we will you bring are in a racist? Is it true? I want to ask one more question. You are a racist through Forget the word racist. Benny. You is it true? You actually just made a racist We're comment. We're talking about facts. You said Benny, I will let Diana respond in a moment. I will let You can't tell me that you don't want heckling from the audience and then engage when we're talking. You can't have it both ways. So I'm talking to you. We'll come to the audience. Okay. One I'm last question. One audience. last question. You can do what you like. One last question. It's, a, it's okay. a free country, as they say. Uh, let me ask you this. It's not just the racism that you've been accused of. You've also been accused of warmongering. You just recently wrote a Haaretz column in June where you said Israel should consider nuking Iran <laughs> to prevent them from acquiring nuclear weapons. Not even Benjamin Netanyahu has said that. You've said it. Uh, well, he's more responsible. He's a prime minister. So you're irresponsible. Yes. <laughs> I mean, nuking an entire country. That is not what's written in the article. You misquote everything you, you say. I asked Almost you a everything you say. It was a question. Okay, actually. I'll say what, what the context is. Please. Is destroying the Iranian nuclear facilities. That's the context. With nukes. Yes, with nukes, but not destroying Iran, as you just said I said. You think dropping a nuke on Iran would have limited... Not on Iran. <laughs> on nu Small nuclear bombs can destroy facilities like Natanz, and you know that. And you... It's not to I do mean, it, you've been advocating this not, for 15 years, right? No, I've been advocating Israeli an Israeli strike against the Iranian nuclear project because Iran says that its policy is to destroy Israel. If they ever, but it doesn't have nukes. If they ever achieve nuclear weaponry, Israel will be in mortal... Uh, but you didn't say that. You said bomb them now. You said in 2008. No, 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 no. Now, in 2008, you you're said... not telling the truth. You know that. You didn't call for the nuclear. You, you didn't call no. for a nuclear strike in 2008 on Iran. No, I didn't. You in wrote 2008. I yeah. said Israel should destroy the Iranian nuclear installation with a nuclear strike. No, I didn't say this that. This is my problem, Benny. You keep saying I quote. You don't remember. No, you, and I do. The New York no, Times, no, no. July the 18th, 2008, an Israeli nuclear strike to prevent the Iranians from taking the final steps towards getting the bomb is probable. I. I didn't say I supported it, I said it's probable. You said but the alternative is letting Tehran have its bomb. Iran, it's very clear what you were supporting. Come on, not, now who's playing word games? Israel does not uh, have as part of its policy and do doesn't announce as its policy the destruction of Iran. But Iran does say that its policy is to destroy Israel and they are working diligently to get nuclear weapons. And if the Iranians do achieve nuclear weapons, uh, Israel uh, will be basically will be finished. That, that's the, that's okay. what the Iranians are aiming at. Let me... And using nuclear, nu tactical nuclear weapons to destroy the Iranian nuclear installations before they insane. achieve nuclear weaponry it makes sense to me. It may not make sense to you it because you're not as an Israeli, so you don't care. But uh, I'm Israeli, a human being, so I care about nuclear I weapons. I don't know what you care used. about. I don't know what um, you care about. Well, you just assumed. Uh, let me go to our panel here. We have Diana Butu, uh, Palestinian lawyer in Israel, former advisor to the PLO. We have Daniel Levy, a former Israeli peace negotiator at the US Middle East Project. Uh, we have Emmanuel Navon, who is an international relations lecturer at Tel Aviv University. Um, Diana, I've got to bring you in first since we got started earlier. Potential fifth column. 
this is exactly the problem, is that he's a racist. He espouses these racist views. That's the problem with Israel. Israel is a, is a society, a country, that is based on this idea of Jewish supremacy. And anything that they do or say goes, which means, therefore, that as a Palestinian who lives in that country, who is not enjoying any benefits of so-called democracy, that they get to espouse and tell me how I feel. They get to make statements like we are a fifth column, and they actually treat Palestinians as though they are a fifth column. It's very important, Mehdi, for people to understand that Israel came to us. It's, we didn't immigrate to Israel. Israel is a colonial movement, and as a colonial movement, its aim is to not only get rid of Palestinians, but it's to, tra to transform the entire place to erase and replace. Okay, Emmanuel, I want to ask you this. Do you recognize the shifts that Benny was agreeing on at the start of this segment about what's happening inside of Israeli society. Well, allow me to respond to what Diana just said. She's not telling the truth. What she's saying is not true. Uh, first of all, the, the Jewish country, I mean, there are over 190 states in the world. Most of them are nation states. It's not about supremacy. It is about national self-determination and freedom. Now, we didn't come yeah, to you. The way this the is state, our land. No, it's this not. This is a Jewish land. The way land. that the state it's, was created it's, uh, it's was It's our land, and first of all, when you take, we came to you, it's, it's not, I did not interrupt you. Family. Diana, let, not, let him finish his point, Diana. OK. First of all, when you say we've been there for hundreds of years, the world Palestine, it's an invention of British colonialism. Yeah, no, it was invented in 1920. It did not exist under the Ottoman Empire. Again, not so denier. when this is the story is start, it's, an, it's a colonial invention. So when you say Palestine, and you can't even pronounce it in Arabic because there's no P in Arabic. That's why we say no Philistine, right? There's no J in Hebrew. All right, we did not, right. we did not no conquer. All right, yes. Emmanuel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yes. bring you back to my question and then move on. What do you make of Belzal el Smotrich and Itmar Get Ben Gavir referring to Arabs in the most dehumanizing race? Are you going to deny that as well? Like every society, we have our extremists. Okay. Uh, it's a democracy. I don't agree with them, but we have, like every society, we have our extremists. And Yours I, are in government. Yes, well, I didn't vote for this government. I wish they were not in the government. Okay. Daniel hasn't spoken. Daniel Levy. When I was in a Zionist youth movement and president of the World Junior Jewish Students being pumped with the talking points and the propaganda points, I really think they were more sophisticated, and I may be misremembering this. <laughs> I cannot, genuinely cannot believe that this is what now constitutes an Israeli attempt at defending and putting your best foot forward. But then I look at the reality in Israel today, and of course that's what it should look like, because what's the reality we're living in? And let me take two snapshots. First of all, it's really not that surprising that we've got to this point. When you consider the impunity with which the external community and Israel's allies and the West and the US treat Israel, despite the litany, the entire spectrum of violations of international law and of human rights, and yet every time there's an excuse, there's a veto at the United Nations, yep. and then there's more arms. And in that respect, don't expect Israelis to come up with better talking points when they don't have to, because you're willing to run cover for them and create completely the wrong <laughs> incentive okay. structure. So please respond briefly. I, I must you. protest. You've brought three um, people in a panel, two of whom yeah. are pro-Palestinian, yes. anti-Zionist. That's the purpose of the panel, uh, yes. The, the, it's supposed to be t two against one. We that's the, that's we, the way you've organized yes, this. Yes, we did ask you to watch the show before you I came here. I consider myself pro-Jewish, no, you're not Palestinian, no, no, pro-human. No, no. I consider oh, no, myself... Okay. Right. Let you, no, let me finish. Please, let me finish. You are a pro-Palestinian propagandist. That's oh. all you've become, just so that you know that. Let's go around the audience. We're going to try and see where we've got some hands up. We're going to go to gentleman here, third row, with the jacket on. Uh, just if you could say something more from an Israeli perspective in terms of the threat they face from Hamas as an Islamist movement, which is, is pledged to slaughter all the Jews in Israel. That's what it says in its charter, never revoked charter. If you could explain that in more detail, please. The Hamas is a small uh, organization with a small army uh, of terrorists. Um, it doesn't represent, in my view, an existential threat to Israel, but as part of the larger 
um, um, Muslim radical Arab world, uh, that part of it, uh, including Iran, uh, together they do represent an existential threat to Israel. Israel is not fighting merely the Hamas, it's fighting the Houthis, it's fighting militias in Syria and Iraq, it's fighting the Hezbollah, orchestrated by the Iranians at the moment, which wants to destroy Israel, yes. A lady here in the third row on the second. My question is to Diana or Daniel, because I want an honest and truthful answer. Given the decades-long brutality against the Palestinians by the Israeli government without much regard for international law or consequences, should we have seen the escalation in this genocide coming? And what could be the global implications when states disregard international law to justify and even normalize genocide? Diana, briefly. We've gotten to a point in this world where the world tells us that nothing can justify October 7th, and yet everything that Israel has done since October 7th can be justified by October 7th. That's a distorted world, and we have to understand what, the, what this occupation has meant. It's been violent from, the, from day one. The Nakba was violent, and what we're seeing today is a continuation okay. of that Nakba. For world order to be restored, we need to have a system where all states are held to account, not where we get to have a country that says it's time to bomb Iran because they might have a nuclear weapon. Big secret, Israel has a nuclear weapon too. Gentleman in the brown jacket and then the gentleman here in the blue jumper. Um, I know that we're on uh, Al Jazeera, Qatari station. What do we think about the fact that Qatar has funded Hamas for so long, persecuting Gaza and Palestinians, and also we haven't heard one mention of the 120 hostages still being kept. And what pressure could Qatar be putting on Hamas to release those hostages immediately, regardless of all the rest of this? Well, uh, Qatar has been supporting the Hamas for, dec for at least a decade with money, propaganda, etc., etc., probably using Al Jazeera also uh, in, in that uh, fashion. Um, this should end. I think normal states shouldn't support what the world regards, or at least the Western world regards uniformly as a terrorist organization. It's true that Hamas is holding, still holding 120 Israeli hostages, women, children, octogenarians, two-year-olds and whatever. They had 250 in the beginning, now it's been reduced to 120. Many of them killed by Hamas people. <laughs> Many of them killed by, by Hamas. Israeli, and by Israelis. And by Israelis. Israelis. Also, Israelis also killed okay. some of the hostages. Hopefully, they will be released. Okay. We all we, we hope they will be released. Um, I would just say one thing. Why did the Israeli government prop up Hamas for so long and encourage Qatar to send money to Gaza? St stupidly. Out of stupid. They're, okay. not letting, they're not hearing my answer. You ask, oh, I'm just wondering. You ask the just question, so let me ask, answer. You, the aren't, you give a long answer, though. Uh, the answer is that the Israeli government under Netanyahu behaved stupidly, okay. and this was part of the incompetence of, of um, Netanyahu. I don't think it was incompetence. Uh, let's go to the gentleman here in the blue jumper. Let's take his microphone. <clears throat> I'm, I'm Martin Shaw, and I wrote a book called What is Genocide? Oh, I, I perfect wanted, person. I what is genocide? I wanted to bring Martin? Benny back to Gaza because you said it's a war it's, and there's collateral damage, and that Hamas knew, and that may be true. But, I mean, the real point is that Israel knew, isn't it? That if you uh, it, it bend the rules of war so that 100 people can be killed for one militant, if you do that thousands and thousands of times with 2,000 pound bombs, you know that the whole of Gaza is going to be a ruin. You know that you're going to destroy that society. And that the, the only way we can understand that in an overall sense, it's not a series of war crimes, it is a, a one big crime, and I think the name for that is genocide. Absolutely. Do you want to respond to that? Hold on, let him respond. I think I've already made the point. The Hamas, when it attacked Israel on the 7th of October, knew that Israel would retaliate with bombing and knew that lots of Gazan civilians would die. They were hoping for that because that looks good on Western television images. But they say that killing a lot of uh, uh, Gaza civilians is good because they go to heaven. They're, they become martyrs. So this is, this is Benny, allowed. Can I, Benny, can I ask you a question? Can I, hold Sorry, on, can did I, I? Did I say something wrong? No, no, I just, I just, want, I say I just, want, to, I just want to follow your logic. The Hamas knew that. I just want to follow your logic. Your argument is Hamas 
Hamas knew that if they did this, we'd do a genocide, so we did a Not genocide. Not genocide, no. You're misusing Like, they knew that we would no, come and kill lots they, of people, so they we would did. Kill, it's a very they weird knew, They knew that defense. Israel would kill lots of they Gazans. They knew that Israel would kill lots of Gazans. Not a great yes, they knew Israel. that. Going after the Hamas, they knew that lots of Gazan civilians would be killed, and they were happy with this uh, because of international pressure, which would result. OK, we're running out of time. I want to take the gentleman in the suit. Okay. Yes. Benny Morris, you say that the ICC should issue an arrest warrant against the Israeli Prime Minister and the Israeli War Minister, Yoav Gallant. But on the 9th of October, they imposed a total siege on 2.3 million civilians in Gaza, depriving them of water, medicine, food. That is what they're accused of, starvation as a weapon of war, something that the Syrian and the Russian regimes were accused of. Do you condemn that? Has anybody been uh, died in Gaza of starvation? This is yes. Uh, yes, this Benny. Is, this is this is total this is total nonsense. Hold the Israeli, on. the Israeli. You want ha, me to ha, answer? Yes, I do. But, but you want me to answer? But I want some evidence. There's you can't just say things that are false. I'm not going to let you say that. The Israeli government, I think, the ministers debated whether to cut off water, cut off electricity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they eventually resolved not to do that. And uh, though, though lots of reporters have been saying, and the United Nations, that Gaza is on the verge of starvation, on the verge of famine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that has not happened. That Benny, not how do happened. you know that? How do you know that? Hold on, hold on, stop heckling. How do you know that, Benny? And please. You I haven't talk. You don't read just have to any report of anyone dying of starvation. There have been many reports. I haven't read any. So that makes it nonsense because you haven't read any. I haven't heard of anybody you don't think there's dying a famine. of starvation. You don't think there's a famine no, in Northern Gaza? No, I think Gaza. there's a, a, a food problem there. People, food is... Do you think there's a famine in Northern Gaza? I don't know what the word famine means. There is a food problem. There's a la there's, there's malnutrition. There's, this I have heard. But nobody's died. They've all conveniently as I, stayed alive. As far as I know, nobody has died of starvation. In the Gaza I mean, you're a as far as I know. I've read quotes from I'm you not, saying you're a historian, you look at the source and you find the evidence, and now you're like, I don't know what famine means, I haven't seen anything. I mean, it's a big claims you're making, you should back it up with some evidence. You I'm should telling, back it up. You, I, tell me a report in which somebody has died of starvation. Cindy, Cindy, Cindy McCain. Who's Cindy McCain? Is the head of the World Food Programme. She's she the widow. She, wait, she she's said the what? widow. She said what? She's the widow of she, Senator John McCain, the most pro-Israeli senator she, of my lifetime. She said what? She said Northern Gaza are in a full-blown famine, and that there are children, women and children, in skeletal states there. Did she say somebody died of starvation? I'm asking you. Cindy Did McCain, anybody die of starvation? Cindy, yes, there have been documented cases. Read the newspapers. You, you, Read the you, humanitarian agencies. What you just agencies. quoted didn't talk about oh, starvation. You said there was no famine a moment ago. I didn't say. I said I don't know what famine is. Oh, well, that's is. a good get-out, and it's at the core of the discussion. Let's take another question. A uh, gentleman in the green jacket has been waiting a while. Hi, my question is to Benny. I just want to know, um, if you were Palestinian, right, and you were born in Palestine, would you, given the circumstances, support a Palestinian's right to resistance? In yes. the form that they have... The, the, I, the I don't know about the form. I would support Palestinian resistance if I was living under Israeli occupation, yes. Which is what the Palestinians are. <laughs> yes. Benny, Benny uh, we're, we're out of time. I do... It's a very interesting question he posed, a very interesting answer. I do want to ask about, because I watched a recent uh, discussion you did and you were telling your opponent, you need to have empathy, you need to put yourself in other people's shoes. So let's just continue on, gentlemen's very good question, I thought. I mean, if you were a kid in Gaza right now, and you saw your home blown up by the Israeli Air Force. You saw your parents incinerated in front of you. You're starving. What's your view of Israel going to be? It'll probably be very negative, but it might also be negative towards the Hamas who generated this conflict and led to that home being bombed by Israel. You think that's what Israel. the kid is thinking when he sees he his parents killed by an he, Israeli bomb? He, he might think both things. He probably... He what prob would you think if you were that kid? Probably I would describe uh, the death uh, of his parents to an Israeli bomb and to the Israelis. But I might, on reflection later, think maybe the Hamas shouldn't have slaughtered so many Israelis on the 7th of October, which led to this. I'm genuinely asking, is that your talking point? Or is that, as a human being, that's how you would feel? As a human being, I think I would feel anger towards those who had just killed my parents. But I think growing up and on reflection, I might think that the Hamas had led to this. I might Quite the empathy I was looking for, but uh, we will... I mean, if that's your honest answer, I'll take it. That's, that's my answer. I appreciate that. Benny Morris, thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you to our audience uh, in London's Conway Hall. Thank you to our panel of experts uh, who joined the discussion. That's all we have time for. Thank you for watching at home. Good night.